was reading my book and I might have just fallen asleep because I just felt so relaxed. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing another reading vlog today and I have some books in mind that I really want to read and obviously I want to share them with you. So today I'm finishing off this book called The Satsuma Complex and this is by Bob Mortimer. Bob Mortimer is an English comedian I'm pretty sure. I can't remember which but he's on an English TV comedy show and I'm always intrigued to see if celebrity writers are any good and you know what so far so good I've got 50 pages left this is a mystery comedy book it feels pretty similar to the Thursday murder club which again I love so I'm gonna finish it off and then give you my final review I think I'm gonna give it like a three and a half out of five. So the story is about a man called Gary who is the most average person ever. He goes to the local pub to meet his friend Brendan and Brendan seems to be in a bit of trouble. Brendan then leaves and Gary spends the rest of his night with this woman, but he doesn't catch her name. And then the next day, Brendan goes missing and the police come and knock on Gary's door and are like, you were the last person to see him. And so Gary decides to kind of start his own little investigation and has to track down the woman and see if she knows anything. It was definitely an interesting mystery. There were quite a few components that linked really well. So you'd like hear a mention of something at the start and then later on in the story, you'd be like, oh, it's gotta be that thing, which, I find really satisfying. I like connecting the pieces of the puzzle. He's a comedian as well, so it was actually quite funny. It's definitely British humour, so it's pretty dry and sarcastic. The type of funny where you're not like laughing out loud, but it's just the nose snort, you know? Though like it was it was a good little giggle. I also love, love, love a funny little old person, and he basically befriends his neighbour, and Grace, the little old lady, becomes his kind of partner in crime or investigation really so that is really funny as well quite a lot of violence at the end which i wasn't really prepared for because it's like not like that at all throughout the book i think it's a solid three and a half i wouldn't rate it any more than that because it felt like it was trying to be part of that group of mystery comedies which it is but it's just not as good as the other ones that i've read i don't know if it's trying too hard or if i'm just being harsh but yeah it didn't blow me away. So that is the Satsuma Complex. I've actually just realised that there's quite a few books that I want to read next. I'm gonna make an Instagram story so that you guys can pick which one I read next. This one is called The Maid by Nita Prose. It's another mystery crime book but it's set in a hotel and I think the maid walks in onto a dead body. I think that could be really good. This is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clune. I think this is about an orphanage with like magical children in it and I think it's about friendship and found family. This one I think you all know what it is but it's A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass, the second book in the Akatar series. But apparently this one is the best one maybe and also it's kind of steamy apparently so <laughs> I kind of want to read that. And then the last one is A Man Called Ove by Frederick Backman. And this is about an old man. I think there's like a child, like a young boy in the neighborhood or something and they become friends. I don't know. Apparently this is a tearjerker. So those are all of my choices. Where's my phone? Because that's kind of necessary for this. Okay, I'm going to take a picture of all of the books. I'm going to let you guys vote which one I should read next. And then whichever are the top two books that you guys vote, I will read in this video.
I am 112 pages into this book and I love it. I really love it. I was not expecting it to be like this. I don't really know what I was expecting. I think because it's about like a children's orphanage and magical creatures for some reason i thought it would be quite young but it doesn't feel like a children's book but turns out it's actually really good i really love the way that it's written it's actually really funny and the children are so cute it's basically about an orphanage inspector who works for the government and and he has been sent to a more like dangerous orphanage to see if they need to shut it down or not all of the children's powers are very different i don't really know where it's gonna go like something bad has to happen surely but right now i don't really know what that could be love the writing style and it's actually really easy to read i wanted to go for a walk and read outside but it's completely overcast so maybe i'll stay inside today i don't know but that just seemed really boring to me we'll see this author i can't find any faults with it so far apart from i think the little twist that has just happened it wasn't as shocking as like i thought it was going to be but like i said there's still like 100 pages left i think it's a standalone book so it has to come to a close i love every single character they're just so well written and i don't really like children <laughs> normally i was in the park earlier but it just started to rain so i had to leave i was literally there for like 15 minutes maybe um i tried i really tried perfect ending i mean on the front it literally has a quote that says simply perfect and i think it's right this is definitely a five star book for me i haven't had a five star book in a while to be honest i'm quite shocked that this is one of them i wasn't really expecting it but just everything about it was perfect like i know i said earlier that i wasn't like super shocked by the twist or whatever it was still a great twist it also wasn't main part of the story i really love the message of it it applies 
to so many different groups of people in our world it's so wholesome and it makes me feel like really warm the message in this story is so important it teaches you that people fear what they don't know whether that's someone of a different race from you a different religion a different sexuality a different gender anyone who is seen as other to the majority is treated differently and that can be really dangerous so for example in this book the children who are so innocent and have literally done nothing to warrant this treatment from the rest of the world. They are kind of banished to these orphanages, which aren't even orphanages because people don't want to adopt them. They're sent there to be segregated from everyone else because people are scared of them. I found out that this book was actually based off a true story about native children in Canada being taken away from their families and put into these schools where they were abused. I think they were experimented on. All of that was done purely because they weren't white and I've seen that some people don't like the fact that this fantasy book is based off of something so horrific. They might think that this book is making light of the situation, you know, and what these children endured. I think that the story is important. Yes, it definitely glosses over all of the terrible things that happen to the children but it makes it more accessible. There are some people who no matter what you just can't get it through to them and so I think it's important to have stories like this that mirror the real world but don't specifically talk about it because you have to sometimes subliminally get through these messages to people because they can be so stubborn and don't want to talk about the real thing you've got to like secretly get it through to people and it gets its point across in a more digestible way and so more people are likely to see it. There are definitely many lessons to be learnt in this book. I wish I had used some tabs in this, it just slipped my mind and I didn't do it but there were so many parts of this book that I want to remember. Specifically I really loved Sal's poem, so truthful and wise for such young characters. <laughs> I feel like I could speak about this book for a really long time, but I won't. The second book that you guys asked me to read next is A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. However, I want to save it for October, like around Halloween time, because it's about fairies. It's also a really big book and I am still like six books behind my reading goal so instead i'm going to read the third book that you told me to read which is a man called O. that is a much smaller book but it was a close third so i assume it's like really good soon to be a major film starring tom hanks i've seen this book in youtube videos where people are like trying to make themselves cry <laughs> so i have a feeling it's quite sad but i'm excited to find out days and I am about halfway through this book and I'm really enjoying it so far. I was kind of right about what the book's even about. It is about a very grumpy man but he doesn't meet a little boy who like changes his life. It's um the family next door that like moves in. They're kind of breaking down his walls and it's just really sweet. I'm also really surprised because obviously he's really grumpy and that's not like fun to read about because he's just so negative about everything. There's something really endearing about it that you're kind of like, oh, you know, I kind of do think that myself, but I would just never say it or I would try not to think about it. There are lots of things in this world that are annoying to everyone, but most of us just kind of move past it. You know, he does not move past it and he gets really annoyed and I kind of love that. It is also very sad. I would read the trigger warnings before starting this book if there's anything that you wouldn't want to read about. I don't think there are really enough stories about old people. <laughs> they seem to be forgotten quite a lot and it's a nice way to remember that any little old person that you see in the street has lived a full life. I'm very excited to finish it but <laughs> before I do 
I just went for a food shop and of course, like I have no self-control. So I went to the book section because UK supermarkets have book sections. It's where all of the magazines and stuff are and they always do amazing prices. And of course I've gone and bought four books. So I thought I would just show you as a little mini haul to finish off this video. So the first one that I got, I've actually been waiting for because I didn't want to get the hardback because I hate hardbacks. And it is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She wrote The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and also Daisy Jones and the Six. I'm pretty sure that Carrie Soto is in Malibu Rising. I think Malibu Rising might be my favorite book from Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's about a tennis player who I think she retired, but then she sees someone beat her record. And so she has to go back and try and reclaim the record. I don't think I've read a book about sport, to be honest, unless it's like a memoir of a sports person. I'm excited to read this. The next one that I got, I've seen in a lot of places on TikTok, I think, and also on YouTube. I don't know anything about it. It's Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. And it says he's absolutely not falling for the good girl. Ooh, so maybe she's a bad girl. No idea what it's about. Naomi wasn't just running away from her wedding. Ooh, so she runs away from a wedding. She has an evil twin. It sounds quite complicated, to be honest. A fun romance, maybe. I could do with something fun after reading this because this is quite sad so yeah excited about that to see if you know it lives up to the hype and then next you made a fool of death with your beauty by akawiki emezi beautiful book cover i was actually drawn to the colors of this one and that's why i picked it up but yeah i think this one is about the opportunity of a lifetime to escape her city and she goes on an island holiday and then it says something about her opening her heart to someone new. So again, another romance. I'm pretty sure Jack Edwards read this and rated it four stars and I really trust him. So I'm excited to read this one. And then lastly, honestly, you're probably thinking, how Coco, have you not read this already? But I got It Starts With Us by Colleen Hoover. It's taken me this long because I kind of told myself I wouldn't read any more Colleen Hoover books because I just don't think they're that great. I mean, I've read some in the past and have loved reading them but i believe that there are better books out there but it's stupid really i think if you enjoy a book you enjoy a book it shouldn't really matter if it's considered like good writing or not she's definitely a problematic author in some senses i'm kind of intrigued to see what this is about we'll see what lily bloom has in store oh god it's just so cringe who names a character lily bloom but anyway that is the last book of my little haul i'm very excited to read those i think i might film something with them next i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you in my next one bye